So here's an example of something done without a right vena or a cutter or one or the other missing altogether. Let's see how I got there. Hello and so I hope you're ready for my new helping of cake loss for today and the reason why I've decided to make this video is because only too often I ended up buying stuff that I didn't need and then finding a perfect perfect little way to to uh, use things at hand and come up with nice results. So this one is uh, one of my favorite tips and I just thought I'd put it right in the beginning so no one misses this particular one if any. <laughs> Probably not very strategic but anyway. So uh, this cutter, uh, this vena is by uh, Sugar Art Studio and uh, the one I chose to overline is the bigger one and it seemed to be too big and I thought well, it might just stick out but actually it doesn't if it's in, if it's in perfectly perfect perfectly well and the reason for that is the uh, fact that the vein itself is concave so it has that dip uh, where all the size goes and I've cut it uh, nice and thick so you will see that it doesn't stick out and yet uh, when I lift the, uh, the vein you'll see the nice shape of it so it really fits like a glove uh, so yeah this tip worked really really nice um, and um, uh, actually it's you know for petals you know, it's easy to kind of uh, fiddle and adapt petal petals and also uh, do them freehand however uh, leaves is altogether a different matter because it's they s seem to have more defined shapes as opposed to petals and so uh, they do need cutters more often than not by the way this is a cutter that I've made by hand one of the less successful ones I'll get to that in a bit uh, but um, yeah so here I have a vein that is smaller than a leaf which I consider very very brave of me to try however it does I think eventually it does work uh, I've um, seen in nature um, leaves that are very textured in the beginning and yet the texture kind of subsides by the ends and this particular leaf um, set of leaves I've seen somewhere on Google and I couldn't really uh, take a closer look because the picture is too small but the idea here basically is to kind of remove the line of uh, the vena and um, make it all kind of uh, graduate into no texture and then shape the leaf how I want it to be and so uh, that brings us to a, a third tip and this one is ivy and ivy I love to do and what I do I just um, uh, do the inside shaping so now I have a very clear shape and outline where I want to cut it and I use uh, this little wheel tool I prefer it to scissors sometimes scissors work better you just have to play around and see what happens and while I'm at it this is called porcelain and to vein it uh, okay with this kind of cruel and very textured veiner you really need to dry it out first otherwise it'll just stick or tear or both and it's still kind of very very uh, easy to tear it as is that's why I didn't press it very hard and then I've, uh, I'm trying to press it again and here it worked however if the vein is uh, hard to line up as this one is try not to do that unless you're totally confident because if your pattern overlap and uh, just gets a bit messy the effect of the final uh, the final result of uh, this ivy it's just, it's just not gonna uh, it's just gonna look a little bit wrong and now we have gum paste and gum paste is a beauty to work with sometimes I think again uh, when I get really really um, bored with um, uh, getting my cold porcelain stick everywhere but that's probably because I use DIY cold porcelain but then it's easy to work with but anyway uh, when it comes to breaking things and transporting gum paste and I would know I have a video there uh, about the difference between the two uh, pastes so uh, check out my description I'm gonna try to link it up there but yeah uh, as uh, some of you would know I work with both mediums and I love cold porcelain uh, probably a little bit more than gum paste on the whole. So anyway this tip here is basically uh, 
to try and find a good quality uh, cutter that is as neutral as possible and in this case it is neutral because it's just a rose cutter try not to snip uh, the metal bit where it joins and then just do your best to gain the shape that you like and to go from rose petal to leaf is actually quite easy and it's hard to mess it up because even if you do um, make it really wobbly looking the leaf eventually does work out to look quite okay as you'll see in a minute when I was trying to adapt some really tricky uh, cutter to make it a simple lift simply because I wasn't using that cutter so I thought why not but this one is a nice one to adapt I'm even thinking of getting some more of these just to create different things with them uh, I actually bought it the set I bought it from China for like two pounds or something now this uh, these are Dahlia cutters uh, and you just could not even tell a difference and these are the one the cutters I was telling you about they didn't work out very nice looking but actually they worked fine Anyway, I hope I'm talking and I'm saying things so quickly. I hope I'm making sense. As always, I'm doing my voiceover in the middle of the night. So anyway, so this is the leaf. And as um, you could see, you could give it this uh, kind of uh, fantasy shape. Or you could do something more realistic looking. Uh, just by using uh, different tools. And, um, and yeah and just play with it and see what happens and have fun with it. So if, it, if you're new to my channel, um, I do a tutorial on making a pretty, uh, beautiful and creative sugar flowers and corpuscular flowers every week or at least something related to those flowers just like this tutorial uh, so please subscribe um, I'd love to see you become part of my community here on YouTube and uh, for those of you who are coming back and leaving comments and are generally lovely thank you very much I am grateful to see you back so this is the last uh, tip here and uh, this one is probably the, the best known and more the most common sense one which is why I left it to the end but even though it's quite well known it's still as brilliant as it was when it was first invented I don't know probably by first person who made sugar flowers and you could cut almost any shape out of it really however I would say uh, don't uh, try to avoid doing things like um, daisies and things because they're just too fiddly especially if you work in cold porcelain however uh, for cutting out the shapes like this uh, it's just a godsend if you need to do something really really quickly and don't have time to order something and want to take on a last minute order or just want to do some kind of a, a very unusual shape and that uh, you know it basically is the equivalent of making your own molds uh, for um, uh, for Venus so, um, and I think these are my uh, little tips. I think I might do a, a separate video on molds. Let me know if you would like to see that or actually let me know what other videos you would like to see uh, except for actual tutorials and even with tutorials of what uh, flowers you'd like to see. Anyway, so just um, uh, drop me a line if you have any thoughts on this video and whether you liked it or not and so on and so forth. Make sure you share it and make sure you stay on uh, my channel, uh, press a bell and um, get all the notifications of my new videos and other than that I will see you again next Thursday have a lovely week and uh, be well and happy and make lovely flowers and this is Christina Wallace, Cake Loss Fit. Bye bye!